In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn on the uncertainties for your slope or gradient and the y-intercept values from Logger Pro 3.16. Right now, I just have some data in the x column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and some values in the y that don't give me a perfectly straight line. So I've gone up to data, analyze, and created a linear fit for my data. So now what we want to do is if I was in a physics IA, I would actually go to my video about how to create max min lines and create an uncertainty and a gradient that way. But if we're not in that case and we'd like to know how close this gradient is, we can get Logger Pro to calculate for us. I'm going to double click on my box here and you can see I've got the option to show uncertainty. While I'm here, I want to point out one other thing. You can see that it's being told to display four significant figures. I have a lot of students that want to tell me that that's the um, number of significant figures of my slope and my y-intercept, and that tells me something about uncertainty. No, it doesn't. It's only there because I've told it to be there. If I really want to look at the uncertainty of these values, I really should be looking at the error bars and the uncertainty that go with each of these measurements. Okay, so now that I've clicked on that button, I'm going to hit OK. And you can see now that they will automatically appear in my box. So remember, the uncertainty there is just with four significant figures because I've told it to be there. Uncertainties really should only have one significant figure, and now that should be rounded to 0.1, which would give me a slope of 1.7 plus or minus 0.1. In this case, my y-intercept at 0.3 should be plus or minus 0.3. So the paragraph that you see right now on the screen came from the subject report that the examiner completes every year. and. This part comes from the internal assessment section in terms of the analysis. And one of the things I want to point out is I often get students wanting to tell me about the correlation coefficient of the data. Now the issue is that when you do this in mathematics, you're using numbers that are perfect. They're not perfect as in they're on the line of base best fit, but they don't have an error associated with the number. But in physics, we do. So one of the things that the examiner is trying to point out here is that we might have some data that might look like it's a specific line of best fit, but if we don't have the physics behind it, the data coming from the correlation coefficient might actually not have any relevance. Please always look back to your data and the physics behind it before you start making some statements about the correct values. I hope that's helped you, and if you need other videos, please let me know in the comments.